Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to One P Talk, One Purpose Blog Talk Radio Show. I am the editor and owner of One Purpose Magazine, and I am here with another week of our community chat, where we bring you self-love talk, culture topics, and main topics that are centered around health, wellness, and mental health. Thank you for tuning in to our weekly podcast. I hope you are here to enjoy the show. Hey, 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 it's your girl, Nia, Nia Javon Andrews with Jones Publishing and Enterprises, editor and owner of One Purpose Magazine. I hope you all have been able to check that out lately since last week when I plugged it. So I have been, (laughs) for some reason, I have an issue. Every time I come to log on, it's just like my, I don't know if my brain just freezes or what happens, but I have trouble every week logging on. I don't know. I have to do something about this. (laughs) Maybe I'm just getting to the point of being exhausted between talent and technology. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see when I get some help around here, if I can do things on time and a little bit better. But anyway, moving forward, I, I am glad to have your ear for the moment that I have it. I don't No, uh, let's see if anyone's in here. No one's here. So when it's recorded, I guess people go back and I share it. That's when people usually click on. But I come on at various times, and sometimes I don't announce that I'm on. But right now I'm live. And uh, today I wanted to just address women. I don't know why this has been on me like crazy. But uh, I wrote a chapter in my book specifically addressing women and talking directly to women, dealing with jealousy. And I think I talked to, I've talked a great deal about it on this this show um, because I'm a woman, you know, and know, we know each other better than anyone else. So I think it's, I personally think it's a little bizarre when men have platforms that are um, directed towards women. But in truth, we we uh you know we are the spenders so it's i guess it's easy to target us and i i, I dislike it a lot honestly i really dislike it a lot i think that men no no man man men no men <laughs> so they need to kind of be savvy and target them how men like to be targeted and you know whatever they spend money too it, it it's just truth so I don't know. It's just maybe we're the easier target when it comes to spending. But I have been very vocal over the years on how I dislike men platforms uh, benefiting off giving advice to women that's really on the surface advice and not really dealing with the root of things that that we need to deal with to be better people, you know. Uh that's a, that's just a gripe of mine that I've always talked about. But particularly, I wanted to talk about a few things um, in the in the in the atmosphere of sisterhood and how important it is. And even if it's just like your mom, real sisters, cousins, friends, however the dynamic is, mother-in-law. <laughs> I think that it's very important that we begin to nurture those relationships, mend those relationships, and do what we have to do to make sure that the bond is tight um, between us. And the bond is tight enough to where we can kind of correct each other in love. It doesn't always feel good. You know, love is not this idea, uh, this fantasy idea that comes in in this whimsical form that's always going to feel good. You know, someone who is going to love you is going to correct you in truth, with truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. So I think we, we need to get to a place where we're nurturing and building bonds to where other women are our safe place to just be honest and vulnerable and really talk about some of the things that we're going through 
and really start discussing and sharing how the burden of carrying it all has made us angry and weighed us down and just really connecting on a level where we find similarities in each other and 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 realize that as a, as alone as we may feel we are not alone in this life's journey which is feeling <laughs> feeling like the the birthplace for hell you know if if that makes sense the nesting ground for for uh, for hell if you will but um i think that we really need to reconnect as, as our sisterhood and i know that it's a lot of it going on right i know that there's a lot of activities around women and we have a lot but i do think that we need to start building these sisterhoods with our men in mind um you know i i was one of those people who was very critical of the time when a lot of women in ministry was having the conversation about finding your boaz right and you know, being this a certain type of woman to be prepared for when the man comes or, you know, being a talking about what Naomi or Mara what <laughs> Naomi <laughs> talking about and I'm speaking, you know, referencing the Bible. Uh, uh the book of Ruth. And I'm I was just thinking about how A lot of times in that conversation about finding your Boaz, how a lot of women miss the mark, you know, and talking about the relationship and the loyalty that Naomi had to Ruth, Um, how she was able to stand on the shoulders of Ruth to rebuild herself, to rebuild her confidence, to even be able to seek what she desired. She was able to use Ruth as a pillar um, to to change the trajectory of her life. And as a result of that, Ruth was a beneficiary, right? She was able to benefit from, uh, from helping and supporting Naomi. And I just, I, I'm taking a very, very small piece of the book, that book in the Bible, to make my point, you know, so I don't want to make it seem like I'm doing what a lot of people do and using it to to, to specifically make my point. I understand clearly that there's more to this story and more that you can pull out of it. But that particularly always stood with me, how women, it's like we will use the idea of getting a man to whip us into shape, you know, and to keep us on the right path because we want to be chosen. And ultimately, if that's your goal, that's your goal. You know, if you want a family and you want a husband, I get it. But ultimately, the goal is to be the best servant. If you're a believer, you know, and even if you're not a believer, the, the ultimate goal is to be here good on earth, right? And the best way to be good on earth is to have compassion towards other people, be available to your brother and sister here on earth. I mean, I think regardless of your religion, I think we all can agree on that. Um, But I really do think that we have to reestablish the bonds that we have with other women. Um, Isolating ourselves for our household and thinking of me and mine destroys the village, right? And we need the village for accountability. Whether you're single or you're married, the village holds you accountable. The village holds fathers accountable for staying in the picture. You know, uh, the village holds the wife accountable for how she oversees things in her household and her kids and, and things like that. I think that we get so distracted by what other people are doing and how other people are doing it and jealousy and things like that. We forget to connect. We talk about the three, the three, uh, 
the three strand cord, however it is articulated, when it comes to marriage, which is important, you know, when it comes to a marriage union and including God. But where is the rope that ties together the village? You know, um, when you have a wedding, a marriage, when you bring together a union, always a village invited. The village is invited to to over to see over. And I, I'm going in a different direction. I was talking about women, but I think it all makes sense. But the village is there and present to bear witness to the commitment and the vows that you take to that man. And the village is there when you go oh, to that man and that woman for that man and that woman. And the village is there to hold that union accountable when times get hard because times always get hard. We get that. We know that. And I think that the connectors are women. You know, I think that we are connectors. We are the support. We are the support systems, the support structures in our village. And, uh, you know, it, it's hard to to be like, well, you know, we are busier because we are. We are busier. We are working. And that has changed a lot. But the simple things have not changed. The simple things like compassion and love thy neighbor and, and, you know, all of these things have not changed. We can compete amongst other women. I don't have a a problem with friendly competition when it comes to building businesses and things like, and those sorts of things. Competition is good. That's how you gain leverage in the marketplace. And we all want to be in the marketplace uh, nowadays. So, you know, I think that's healthy, but when we start looking at what one don't have and what the other have, I have a man, but my morals suck. You know, I have me me and this man are morally corrupt, you know, uh, but because we have, we have each other, because we have each other, we are looked at as uh, the epitome of what success is, you know, regardless of how morally corrupt or even unsuccessful we are. And you can have a very successful single woman. And the world doesn't look at her for advice. The world doesn't look at her for, you know, an example, a role model, even though she stands in integrity, you know, successful businesses, people respect her outside her community. You know, her community won't look at her, but they'll look at a corrupt couple, you know, and put them on a pillar of, uh, a morally corrupt couple and put them on a pillar of admiration. And to me, that's, that's a sick dichotomy. That's a sick way to think. And our society is inflicted with all kinds of illnesses and how we view things. But um, yes, my whole point of this conversation is like women pray over our hearts, pray over our minds, uh, ask God to help us eradicate jealousy and envy um, that we have for our sisters and have for each other. And let's really, re- really begin to build those bonds so that we can have dialogue and vulnerability. If you have not been to my website to pre-order your book, hit up com. I have billboards going up throughout Chicago this weekend. So check that out. It's $7.77. Until next week when I have a little bit of chat for you. Maybe I can go a little bit longer, but until next week, ahala. Bye-bye.